Hello, everybody. This is Evan, founder and CEO of Gentatech, and we are back again with another high-level overview. Today, we're going to be talking about one of the staples of cybersecurity, and that is network segmentation. If this is your first time tuning into a high-level overview video, the whole point of these videos is to take different technical aspects of cybersecurity and IT and then break them down in a way that is very easy to understand for non-technical business owners. And today's topic, as we mentioned, is network segmentation. Now, I did say that this is a staple of cybersecurity, and I want to make sure I communicate this thoroughly. It is a staple. It is not exhaustive, meaning that this is really a foundational aspect and oftentimes the very beginning of any type of security practices, um, regardless of really where you are or what you're doing. Uh, so much so that when it comes to compliance, for example, PCI compliance, network segmentation is mandated. If you're a government contractor, a lot of the things that you have to do concerning um, compliance is going to be you know, software-based or you have to have certain hardware and all that good stuff, and that may change over time. But one thing that's probably never going to change is the need for your network to be segmented. So we're going to look at exactly what that is and how that works. So there's two different types of uh, two different types of network segmentation. The first is a physical segmentation, and we're going to look at what that looks like. So let's grab a switch here, quickly build this out, and we're going to actually need two. Fantastic. Now let's grab a couple of workstations as well. Oh, there we go. And we'll do two. And then let's go ahead and duplicate these bad boys. All right. And we'll do two here. Now, the important thing to understand here is all of this is encapsulated in one single office. Okay. So this is a single office. Everything under here. All right. But to bring this to life a little bit more, let's give an example of why somebody would do this. Let's say perhaps that this is the office for the C-suite employees. It's going to be your CEOs, your CFOs, things of that nature. And let's say this is the intern office, all right? Fresh out of college, fresh out of school, coming to get some experience with the company. Now, obviously, when we look at it this way, we understand that there's probably going to be important business documents on these computers within the C-suite wing of the office that we don't want the interns to be able to access. And that is exactly what physical segmentation is going to allow us to do. So first things first, we're going to need to connect this device via this switch here. Likewise here. Okay. Now, there is what you call an air gap between these two switches, a la these two different segments of the network. And an air gap is literally the gap of air in between these two separate switches or these two separate devices. Because they are physically separated, they do not have a way built into the software or the hardware to communicate with each other. And this is assuming that this is a very simple unmanaged switch that you plug straight into and will kick the data around to whatever is plugged into it. So the opportunity for to, to be able to hop to one network or the other just does not exist here because of how this is built. So that is a very safe way to go about segmentation. And if safety is the key with unlimited budget or sometimes even, oh, to be quite honest, a lack of common sense when it comes to spending, there's no other way to beat this. And that's simply because, like I said, uh, th there's no way for these things to talk to each other. Now, the issue with this here, well, let's, let's look at a couple of benefits for to talk about the issue. Yes, this is good for security, uh, but segmentation and, 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 and compliance as well, but segmentation can also be really beneficial if you have multiple different aspects of your network that require, let's say, different bandwidths. So let's say you have some high bandwidth needs, maybe some type of server, and then you have some low bandwidth needs, just maybe some type of everyday web browsing for your interns or whatever that may be. Physical segmentation is also going to allow you to do that. So if you do want to connect um, over to one switch to the other, you're going to need some type of layer three device, some type of routing capabilities, and we can look at exactly how that's handled when we look at the next one, which is logical segmentation. So again, this is a very good opportunity to break your network up. But the issue here, as you can see, is, well, it's hardware intensive. So we need to replace all the hardware that we buy for our business. That cycle is usually anywhere from two to five years. So if we're splitting up our networks based on a new switch, we're going to have to replace said switch every two to three years. And it's just not going to be something that's very elegant on the budget. Although it's good and it's safe, 
It's just not very budget friendly, which is why some of the alternatives are a bit more popular. So it really is as simple as that. Now, again, this is a foundational aspect here. Um, this is something that every office needs, uh, but you do have the opportunity to go in depth a lot more, especially when you're looking at something like adding a, a, a router. And then especially if you add a firewall to this, for example, let's say the C-suite um, network needs to be able to kick things over to the intern network, but you don't want it to happen the other way around. You would be able to do that with a layer three routing device as well as a firewall. So this really is physical segmentation and as simple as it is, it's, it's, it's uh, easy to understand. And now let's go ahead and look at logical segmentation. So logical segmentation is going to be the exact same thing done logically. So it's going to be a single office still. And now since we're doing a logical uh, segmentation, we actually only need one switch. So let's take a peek at the switch really quick so we can get a better idea of how this is done. Now we can see the multiple ports on the back end of this switch here, right? Not sure how many there is. Maybe there's, it looks like 12 on top. 12 on top, 12 on bottom here. So there's 24 separate ports. Well, what we're doing is we're taking that concept of physical segmentation and we're using the logic built into these ports here to be able to get that done. So in this specific, let's, let's, let's blow this thing up. In this specific switch here, we have two, four, six, eight ports before it's divided here, two, four, six, eight, and then two, four, six, eight. So for the purpose of an easy example to understand, you can do this with any amount of ports. It doesn't really matter, but it would be really, really easy to separate this here into three separate networks. So you would have eight ports for this network, eight ports for this network, and then eight ports for this network here. And you do that logically speaking. So let's see what that would look like. Let's grab a workstation. Now let's grab two, okay. We're gonna build a couple of different networks here. So this network here is going to be, again, for C-suite. We're going to create another network over here, as we said, for interns. And then let's create another network over here, as we said, but let's just go ahead and do this for maybe management, okay? So what we can do is we can use these devices here to connect directly to what we set as the logical segmentation. So if we connect over here and connect this way, this first bunch of ports here can be used specifically for this network. And let's go ahead and give this network a range. So let's say 192.168, uh, let's go dot twenty dot one two. it would really be dot two as far as the DHCP range. So 192.168.20, let's go dot, I don't know, it really doesn't matter, um, 70. That'll work, okay? So this network here will be able to assign any device that's plugged in to a 192.168.20 IP address in between 2 and 70. Very elegant and very nice. What makes it better is we can keep doing this. So we can go 192.168. Dot 30, dot 2, and then we'll go 192.168.30.70. Dot 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 All right, and here we go here, 192.168, and then we'll just go 40. We'll just keep going up. 42, 192.168.40.70. All right, so as we can see, and we'll go ahead and connect these so you can really get a visual on this. Fantastic. That'll work. And that'll work. So as we can see, we've built out three separate networks that do not have the ability to communicate or talk to each other at all unless we do so through a firewall or through building some further logic into the device, depending on what the device is. Um, but it's the exact same thing as phys physical segmentation without the need to purchase the additional hardware. So that's going to be the basis of really what it is. This is completed with something called VLANs, uh, virtual local area networks. And then VLANs can get very extensive. You have trunking, you have tags, you have different aspects of VLANs that are uh, needed to make this happen. But that is neither here nor there. That's not what we're gonna get into for this specific video. We just wanna see exactly how it works on a foundational level, and this is exactly it. So as you can see from a business owner standpoint, if you have the ability to go ahead and do logical segmentation, you only have one device to replace in the future, 
or to keep track of or to manage. So it really is a very, very, very good opportunity for um, businesses to save money. Now, with that said, you do need some form of a layer three routing device in order to control the flow of data in between these things here. So we would need a firewall router of some sort to be able to say, hey, traffic coming from 192.168.20 is allowed to go to 192.168.30 or is not allowed, whichever way you want it to be. But re regardless, the logical segmentation is going to allow you to do that. Just remember that you're going to need some type of layer three device or router in order to be able to make these things talk to each other. And it can get a little confusing. This is the last thing that we'll say here. Even though you need a layer three device in order to uh, transfer data between one segment of this network to the other, you do, uh, let's see, make the logical portions of the network on the device itself. So all of these ports here, these interfaces will be configured within the software of the actual switch. It's just most likely the switch was just going to be a managed switch is not going to have the layer three ability to control or route the information. So you'll need another piece of equipment for that. Now, when it comes to saving money, that secondary piece of equipment is already going to be needed. There's going to be a router in most offices or a layer three device in most offices anyways. So you're not taking on the onus of having an additional piece of equipment that you otherwise would not need. And that's that folks. That is a very simple look at network segmentation. If you have any questions about anything we talked about today, please do not hesitate to reach out to info at gentatech.com. Any questions, comments, or concerns, we would love to hear from you. If you made it this far, please like and subscribe. We will be back weekly with more high-level overview videos. We hope you have a good day.